Hello all, this is Enthusiastic Steve. Recently I was passed a box of old CB radio microphones. It contained microphones from way back in the uh, mid-70s, uh, all the way up to UK FM ones from the early and mid-80s. One of the microphones that caught my eye was the one here shown on the left. I'm going to call it a grenade microphone, uh, hence the pattern on the front looks like an old hand grenade. Going by the decal on the front, NATO, it looks like it was part of a NATO 2000 UK FM CB radio. I did test the microphones, uh, but most of them had faults on them. Some were in quite a bad state of repair. The NATO was no exception. It did not want to transmit. No, no modulation came out of it whatsoever. But because of the styling of this uh, particular microphone is different to a standard coffin microphone, I wanted to save it. So I thought I'd use an old donor microphone, an old coffin microphone, see if I could get the components within it to fit inside the grenade one. It would also fit in very well with my nostalgic collection of UK FM CB radios. So this is the process I undertook to uh, get the grenade microphone up and running again. So first thing to do then with this microphone is to actually just take the, take it apart. Just three screws on the back actually removes the two cases and this should just pull apart. There you go. Now we have the two parts uh, separated. You can actually see inside to the microphone, the uh, PTT switch, some wiring, uh, the way it held at the bottom, and the dynamic part, which is fouled on this particular microphone. That's the uh, little dynamic insert there. So we're going to replace this with another one from a working microphone. We're going to replace the whole interior actually, which will require us to change the PTT switch slightly. So the same process for the donor microphone. We're going to uh, separate the two halves again. It's, it's a coffin microphone, but it's exactly the same. It's just the mouldings of the actual casing are slightly different. Um, gives it gives it that classic coffin shape. Hence why it's called a coffin microphone. But don't knock the coffin microphones because they work amazingly well. So again, three screws on the back. I've got them separated enough. No, it's got more turns on the front two. Get the old screwdriver in there, and there we come. There we go. Release those. Now we can say, see inside, it's very similar. And I say similar, but as you notice, the PT switches, the PTT switches are uh, 90 degrees angle to each other, so that will make, require some slight modification. And also to note, you'll see the actual dynamic part here is actually a lot larger than the other one. Hence why we're going to have to actually cut away some of this surround and remove this one and cut away some of the surround there to allow it to fit in. Next bit then is just to remove everything from this microphone, which is just as simply, it all just pulls apart. There is no, no hard connections as such in there and it should just uh, separate might just need a little bit of persuasion to get the switch out the grips and there we have it and now we can work on these two halves and there's a little top tip um if you've got a shiny surface like this and you don't want to damage it or scratch it or scratch it um, just place an old tea cloth down it sounds common sense but you'd be surprised how many people will just continue to work on there if, especially if you're doing some cutting or soldering etc also this helps to actually grip the item and it's not slipping around as much either now my tool for cutting this is a dremel type device with a, a small cutting blade on the end so uh, health and safety really you should wear some protective uh, goggles and just be extremely careful fingers keep them away from that Oh, 
Now, also I advise you to have a well ventilated room. That got quite hot and the smell of the plastic fumes, or just get a bit of fresh air from them. So the next stage is to remove the parts from the Donar microphone and just match them up to see if we need to cut away anything else. So these items again, they just pull out and it just comes apart, being very gentle with the wiring because this is quite old wiring and I don't really need to get the soldering iron out just yet. So we can put that to one side. Bring back in the microphone that we're going to fit the parts to, the casing. Now, let's see if we can do this. And now, first of all, I'm going to replace the micro switch, the PTT switch. And now we're going to put this in a different direction. Then we can actually put the wire in the next at the end. I might try and tidy up that little grommet because the grommet is a little bit on the on the weak side there, but. Uh, it's got this, the natural is the original one, but it does need some attention. Let's see if I can get that in that, that gap. If not, I'm going to have to cut that shortly. And this is the important bit. Can we fit the dynamic electric bit, not electric, the dynamic condenser into there? Whoa, what a good fit. That's a nice positive fit. Right, it's onwards and upwards. Right, the next bit is this rubber grommet at the uh, base of the uh, microphone will not fit. It's, uh, it's lightly, slightly worn, but it's far too thick. So I'm just going to snip that away with a pair of scissors. Right, one pair of small scissors. And we're very delicately trying to remove this piece of rubber. That's quite soft, actually. So I've seen it's, it's gone past its sell-by date. But there we go, we remove that. And then we can actually fit the wire in there. Now what I'm going to just try to attempt to do is the back of the case. Do I need to clear any more plastic off of this one for this to mate up? I think I might actually have to. So we'll just try it. And yes, it's, it's proud. I've still got to take a couple of millimetres off there. So hopefully if I trim this down here, it should actually fit. Again, out with the uh, Dremel. Right, this one's a little bit tougher for some reason. I'm just going to do a quick inspection. I think I'm almost through actually. So this one's a little bit tougher, but we're getting there. So again, nice steady, firm hand. And we're cutting through. You can see the smoke. Right, let's see how far we've got with that. Remove the ring. That's a smelly, smelly, smelly. Just going to dispose of the uh, plastic debris. Keep the workshop bit area tidy. Right, that's it. Pick all the bits up, put the uh, Dremel to one side, make sure that's safe. Let's see where we are now with this. So we've cut this away. We've cut that away. I'm just hoping now we ha still have enough actual clearance Does anyone want to find out it's either going to or it's not going to so let's have a look on here looks promising there i think it's just the front area there the wiring just needs sawing slightly but that should go together brilliant 
Now one potential modification I'm going to have to make is with the PTT switch. Um, it's shorter, therefore when the arm goes in, there is a less, there's only a small amount of movement there. And it may, even though it makes contact with the switch, I don't think it's going to push the switch down far enough. There is an, a simple solution to this. There is a recess in there. I'm just going to glue a little bit of wood or something in there just to raise it up those a few millimetres. That should cure the problem. Now, these are very handy things to have. Uh, it's, it's a little bolstered and hardwood model kit of an aeroplane. Uh, well, this, one's, this is a little model helicopter. You can pick them up for a few pounds in little craft stores and things like that. But, I've never built one yet, but what you get is lots of little bits of wood and dowels and things like this, which have become extremely useful, handy bits of wood to have. In this instance, I'm going to cut down one of these small blocks and fit it into the microphone on the PTT switch. Again, same process, I've got a little piece of wood here. Uh, I'm just going to just finish cutting it. Again, using the little Dremel cutter. Nice and gentle. There we go. And the smell of burnt, burnt wood. Mmm. Now I'm just going to glue that little piece of wood, a little blocklet, tiny, tiny bit, into the actual PTT. Uh, using some uh, glue, a little tiny dot of glue. There we go, not too much, put the lid back on. And then we'll just slide that in there. And uh, that should work a treat. Look at that. Clean the little edges up in a minute. Fantastic. Here's the microphone. There is the wood insert in the PTT switch. We can now put that in place there. And you will notice that it will very nicely operate the switch. Next, just to keep the uh, workshop a little bit tidy, or the workbench, kitchen bench. Um, yeah, I wish I did have a workshop, but unfortunately, it is what you got. You make the best use of every, all the tools you've got in it. You could do this on the cheap, like I do, or you could spend thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds and still end up with the same outcome. So, there we go, we'll get there. Job well done. Right, keep it all tidy. Let's move these back in shot. There we go, there's the top bit. I might give that a quick clean first before I put it back on. Let's see if it will all go back together. Right, I'm gonna put it on there. I apologize if my fingers are in the way of the camera because there's not a lot of room here. And it's the only angle I can get, unfortunately, on the bench, but hopefully you can see enough of what's going on to get the gist. So I've lined that up, that should work. We will test that shortly. We will push that on top of there. We will line up the wiring, which is the little tricky bit. There we go. Sounds like it's going to fit on there. There we go. I'll just do the final bit in a minute. We'll get these lined up. We'll get a couple of screws in to start with. Just to hold it all in place. I can take my hand off it now and give you a bit better view when I've got the hand out of the way there. And our second one in. Just do these up loosely. Doing it one-handed. Put that one in there. I'll finish them up tightly shortly. Let's just make sure we get the microphone all still works. Oh, that's it. There we go. That a nice sounding click then. That's what I was looking for just now. And hopefully this will go in there finally. And it does. It seems to insert and it's going in. So everything is lined up. Nothing is getting in the way. Finally tighten that one down. We can uh, just make sure that's still in the camera because I'm moving things around there on the bench and there's not a lot of uh, viewing angle on the camera, unfortunately. So here we go. Good. 
all seems to still work. So what we've got to do now is, there's a little bit of movement on there though, which I'm not too happy with. I might actually have to open that back up and just put something on there to give that a little bit of tension. But um, then what we're going to do is we'll do a clean up, get all the dust and muck and grime off it, and then we'll put it on air and test it. I've just done some more little bit of tinkering. Uh, I took the back off again. What I've done, I've just packed out this PTT switch. So no long, it's no longer really rattling. It's just a fraction of movement, but I want that because I want it to be nice and free and easy to use. But it's got a nice travel now. I just put another tiny little bit of ply on top of the existing one, just a couple of millimeters, just took the play out of it. Now, what I'm gonna do now, as you can see, this is a bit dusty and a bit murky. I'm just gonna clean this up. First of all, I'll get a little toothbrush give it a very light dusting off and get the dust out of there, etc. Then I use some polish. I might even put a little bit of shoe polish on it just to make sure it goes back to its original black color. Um, and then we'll put it on air and give it a test. For cleaning, it's just, uh, there are other product names available. I've just got some uh, spray wipe here um, and some uh, black shoe polish and a little toothbrush to get in to get the dust out. Let's just get a gentle rub with the actual toothbrush, get in there, get in the old grating, just clear any of the dust out there, give it a flick out, just to clean, just to clean it out a little bit. It's, it's 40 odd years old, this microphone, and it's probably never had a, a proper little clean as such. You could even polish up the old back button there if you want to, the old uh, mount if you wanted to, but uh, that's going a little bit too far for myself at the moment. Just making sure it's all clean down the, the joints and the back of the PTT. You could, of course, wash all these components if you wanted to in soap and water uh, when they had them all apart. But they really weren't that bad. It's just surface dust and etc. Uh, a few little bits and pieces in there. It's just getting out what we can, really. And um, Already it looks cleaner. Just a very light spray with the old cleaner. Not too much. We don't want to get it soaking wet. And then uh, we'll just get the, use this cloth and uh, give it a nice bit of a polish and clean and uh, see how it comes up. If you've actually got it, the old little microfiber rags are very good for this type of task. It lifts any of the dust, it lifts any access, excess fluid or any spray, etc. Most of it will just dry off anyway, but you can just rub over it. You can see a shine coming up there already. Absolutely fantastic. Probably won't even need any of the shoe polish on this because it's actually coming up very, very nice as it is. I don't want it to be pristine, just want it to be clean and look presentable. And uh, as you can see, there's a pretty nice shine coming up on that. Look at that, look, shine into the, into the camera. And that's just with one application. I might give it a second one in a minute and just uh, see how we go with that. If you want real extra shine, of course, you can always use some uh, some wood polish, <laughs> some plastic polish. Just give it a quick, very again, a very light spray. Doesn't need a lot on there at all. And again, just come back with the old polishing cloth. Give it a little bit of a buff, get the excess off, and then just give it a wipe over and let it dry on there for a few seconds in a minute. Just let the remainder of it can just dry on there. And then we'll come back to it and give it a buff. That's the polish applied. Look, that shine on there. I'm going to leave the stickers on there for a minute. Look at that. That looks absolutely what well, wonderful. Brilliant. Now, does it work? From have I converted this from a completely dead microphone to something actually usable and sounds good on air? Let's take a look. Okay, I've connected up the uh, grenade microphone to my uh, trusty old York uh, 42, 43 year old radio and we will give it a go on air. Right, one uh, polished and refurbished or internal changed uh, little microphone and the grenade microphone. I should give this a go on air. A testing, a testing, a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Testing the new grenade microphone with the new internals fitted. Um, any background noise interference is because the transmit radio antenna is quite close proximity to my receiving antenna. Um, I've turned the power down and took the attenuation on. But uh, the recording, uh, any background electrical noise is because they're bit, a little bit close. But clarity, 
clarity. Let's see how this sounds. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Test complete. Right, I've recorded that on a SDR receiver, and we'll play that back and see how it sounds. Let's play this back via my TV monitor and see what it sounds like. There we go. Not bad at all. There you have it. Another microphone safe in the bin. A old grenade style microphone. I don't know what the proper name for them is really. It is, a, it is similar to a coffin microphone, but it is a little bit more rounded off, a little bit more stylish. Um, I'm not too sure about that. I'm not sure what that's hiding underneath at the moment. I may remove that and uh, have a little look. It doesn't feel like there's anything underneath there. Um, so that will probably get removed shortly. But as you can see, the lovely clean now, lovely shine to it. It works. Uh, it's, you know, it's not a top quality professional amateur ham radio microphone. But for UK FM, it does do a lovely clear. Um, it does give very good clear audio. You couldn't ask for any more. It's probably working as well as it did when it was brand new. And the internals on this come from another microphone, a coffin microphone, again, which is over 42 or 42, 43 years old. So, um, yeah, can't grumble. Uh, all working, all saved. Um, there you go. The grenade microphone booming out to you across UK FM anytime soon. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, little insight into uh, bringing back to life an old uh, grenade microphone. It's a bit of fun and it saved another one from the bin. I expect uh, we've all got some old microphones that no longer work or some old spare microphones that never get used again. So yeah, give it a go. See what you can try and repair yourself. This uh, particular one is now going to live with my Amstrad 901 circa 1981. That just leaves me to say a massive thank you for watching. Uh, please click the old like button and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And a big thank you again to all my existing subscribers out there. All the best from Enthusiastic Steve.